Hi folks, Mr. Tesalonian back here again. I want to take you through how to build one of the most incredible electric generators I have ever seen. If I walk up to this and show you between those two rods there, which I'm going to give you a lot of zoom ups of so you can actually see them much better. If I go right there, you should be able to see that lightning strike, that little electrostatic arc. There's another one. There's another. There's another. So you can see these electrostatic arcs being generated uh, between these two uh, brass rods right here. All right, so it's a little more difficult to see them, but you can hear them if I zoom out. So there you go, there's another one. The camera zoom's really having a hard time with this due to the fact that there's so many things in the foreground and the background. So there you go, there's a bunch of little arcs, uh, electrostatic discharges. Let's say that's a little more than a uh, centimeter gap that I just watched uh, that spark go across, so is that one. Uh, for every centimeter, the dielectric constant of air requires 30,000 volts to break down that uh, dielectric. So it's also a rating of one kappa. For each kappa, there's 30,000 volts necessary to break through the dielectric constant. So we're generating at least 30,000 volts, if not more, with this. So let me back up and show you what we've got going on here, folks. All we have here is a two-gallon water jug feeding water through a pipe down to a splitter, which separates that stream into two separate streams right here. And these are paint cans. These are small one-quart paint cans, and why I'm talking here, you can actually still hear the arcs taking place. Uh, the one-quart paint cans actually have the bottom cut out, which I'll show you from the top here. You notice the top, or the bottoms are cut out of those paint cans. Uh, what we've got going on here is a cross-wiring situation. You can see all those little arcs. We've got this right hand paint can wired directly down to the left hand water container. And the lower ring of the lower metal can you see is not necessary. All you need are two upper metal induction rings with wires dropping to the opposite container on each side. So you can see this induction ring is actually wired to this bucket down here and that one also to this one. Uh, you may be asking what the heck is going on right here. And what we're doing is this. I've applied a charge and I didn't want to just find out whether these cans were already neutrally charged or one contained a positive or negative charge. What I did was to use a cat fur and a piece of glass and generated a positive charge. And so I applied that positive charge to this can, not both of them, just one can. And what that is doing is as the water comes through that can, that positive charge is attracting the other positive charges through the system here and is bringing that charge all the way down to the opposite bucket. So leaving in the water only a negative charge. So that negative charge makes it through the positive induction ring, lands in our uh, negative charge battery basically. So it's basically taking what is a neutral charged water, separating it, putting it through two containers. And by applying a charge, whether negative or positive, either one of these, I'm making sure that positive is being drained over to the opposite side. So if positive is being drained over to this side, all that's left in the water over here is a negative charge. That negative charge is going from this barrel up that rod into our other uh, induction ring, leaving this one pulling our negative charge out and only positive charge down below it. So in these two buckets, what we end up with is one is a positive charged water, one is a negative charged water. And it can be on either side, it can just be a plastic barrel, these could be trash cans or just the buckets, they do not need the uh, extra metal ring in the bottom, just a wire hanging from your induction into the water. The water is actually the battery source right now that's storing the charge within this system. By separating the charges out of a neutrally charged water, and allowing those two different charged waters to accumulate, we get arcs of electricity, as you've been hearing here in the background, why I'm talking. And if I can zoom in carefully here, you should be able to catch one in a second. Now you can hear the sound on that one. I couldn't really see where it was. There we go, down low down there. See if we can catch one more. There we go. 
So what I want to kind of explain to you, some of the things that you see going on here. You'll notice that the stream of water is nice and tight as it enters our induction can, but you'll notice right there at the opening of the induction can, that tight stream of water starts to break into droplets. And same with over here, which is key to making this system work. If you don't, ha if you have these induction rings up here where the water is actually a straight stream without starting to break into droplets, this won't work. You actually need your induction rings right at the point where the water starts to bust apart, break into smaller droplets. And you'll notice if I go underneath the can here, if we can get a good light angle, you'll notice the water's flaring in all different directions as it leaves the induction ring. And in fact, if I give you a second there, you may even see some water droplets curve uphill wrapping around like little uh, electrons in a uh, fog chamber or a cloud chamber you may know them as. This is just another implementation of Lord Kelvin's thunderstorm. Take a short length of tubing. Get the siphon going. Just suck on this. through the soup can into the bucket and I've got some eye bolts for a spark gap. Have an electrostatic motor. This isn't my design, but it's just hooked to the generator here. 